I'm gonna quickly share with you 30 terms and words that you must know if you're a clothing brand owner. This is that underground lingo that will help you communicate better with your manufacturers, understand your marketing better, and every other little detail of your clothing brand. These are gonna come at you like bang, 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 and you're just gonna be downloading this information into your head. These are things that took me forever to learn over the years, and you're just gonna get it all in one video. Just sit back, relax, and enjoy. Apparel Success is sponsored by my buds over at Brand Crowd. Brand Crowd's a logo maker tool. You type in the name of the logo that you want, smack the enter button. Thousands of logos are gonna come up. You just choose the logo that you like, then you can edit and refine that logo as long as you want for free until it's perfect. This is a hundo P design I made for my own clothing brand using Brand Crowd. If you're interested, head over to brandcrowd.com forward slash apparel success and you can get up to 66% off at checkout. The first term is white label. White label is where manufacturers already have pre-created products without branding and brands and retailers can come in and add their branding to them. The second term is private label. Private label is where you collaborate as a retailer with a manufacturer to create customized products for your own brand. The third term is gross profit. Gross profit is where you take all of the revenues of your clothing brand and you subtract just the cost of goods sold all of the products that you've sold for your brand. And this gives you a profit for just your core business activities. The fourth term is net profit. This is where you take your revenues and you subtract all expenses, including your cost of goods sold, your operating expenses, your taxes. And this gives you a final profit after all expenses have been deducted. The fifth term is keystone markup. And this is super important if you're ever trying to sell wholesale to retailers. This is where you determine the retail selling price by simply doubling the wholesale cost. So so if you made a shirt for $10, then the retail selling price would be $20. And this is a super commonly used pricing strategy that is just really simple if you're ever trying to sell to retailers. The sixth term is screen printing. Screen printing is where the ink is pushed through a screen directly onto the garment to create the design. You can think about this like if you were painting right through a stencil directly onto the garment to create the design. The seventh term is heat press. This is where you place an already printed design onto the fabric and then you use heat and pressure to stick it on. You can think about this like using an iron to transfer the design onto the fabric. The eighth term is streetwear brand. A streetwear brand is a specific type of clothing brand that has a really casual style and came out of the skateboard, surf, hip hop, and Japanese culture. It usually has things like hoodies, t-shirts, sneakers, baseball hats, relaxed fits, and is urban inspired aesthetic. The ninth term is lifestyle brand. A lifestyle brand is a clothing brand that sells products associated with a particular way of life or identity. And they usually embody specific values, interests, and aesthetics. Quick example, my clothing brand is a lifestyle brand because we go after rural Canada and the way of life and identity of people living in rural Canada. The 10th term is fashion brand. A fashion brand is a much wider range of clothing that you could be selling where you're just looking for a distinct identity that sets it apart from all the others in the market. And what makes a fashion brand different from lifestyle brands and streetwear brands is that lifestyle brands and streetwear brands have a specific niche that they're going after that is rooted in urban culture or in a particular way of life. And fashion brands tend to be much wider. The 11th term is print on demand. Print on demand is a business model where your products are only produced as orders come in. And the whole point of this business model is to give you flexibility and to minimize the upfront costs for your brand. The 12th term is content marketing. Content marketing, put simply, is where a company produces relevant, consistent, valuable content on social media with the intention of building up an audience that knows, likes, and trusts them so that you can drive profitable actions from your customers in the future. The 13th term is trademark. A trademark is a unique symbol, logo, word, or phrase used to distinguish your brand from all of the other brands out there. And it's legally protects your brand from unauthorized copying or imitation from other brands. The 14th term is scarcity marketing. Scarcity marketing is a marketing strategy where you create urgency by highlighting the limited availability or time constraint of a particular product that you're selling to encourage customers to act more quickly. Our 30% off sale ends soon. There's only 24 hours left to get this deal. There's only 10 hoodies left in stock. 
Act now, you get the picture. The 15th term is wholesale. This is where you sell your clothing in large quantities, usually at a lower price per unit, specifically to businesses or retailers rather than to individuals. And the whole point of this is to sell in bulk at a discounted rate for resale purposes. The 16th term is social proof. Social proof is the influence that the actions and opinions of other people have on our own decisions and behaviors. It's like when we see people liking or doing something, we tend to like it or want to do it ourselves because we trust their judgment and we want to fit in. The 17th term is merch. Merch is short for merchandise, and it's where products are created for an artist, a brand, or an organization to be particularly sold to their fans or consumers. The 18th term is MOQ. MOQ stands for minimum order quantity, and it is the smallest amount of product that a supplier is willing to sell in a single order. So screen printing facilities might have an MOQ, a minimum order quantity of 50 t-shirts that you have to get made for them. And if you want to make less, they just won't do it. The 19th term is PPU or price per unit, which you might hear come up if you're ever working with suppliers or manufacturers which is basically just how much each individual item costs for you to make. If you're making 50 shirts and they each cost $7, then your price per unit is $7. The 20th term that you just need to know about is end-to-end -end manufacturing. This is where your manufacturer who's making your clothing handles all stages of the production process, from sourcing the raw materials to the manufacturing, to the packaging, and every single aspect of the production process. You might look into this if you don't want to work with all these different companies and have it confusing, but you wanna find one company that can just handle everything for you. The 21st term is cut and sew. This is where the clothing is put together and stitched together from scratch rather than being pre-made. A lot of clothing brands use pre-made blanks to print all of their clothing on, and cut and sew is where you're actually making those garments from scratch. The 22nd term is 3PL, which stands for Third Party Logistics Company. What a third party logistics company will do is they'll take all the logistics off of your hands. They'll handle the shipping, the storing of all of your products, sending out all of the orders for you, and they are a partner that you can work with while growing your brand. The 23rd term is scaling up. You'll hear this all the time while trying to grow your brand. I wanna scale up my brand. And what it really means is that you're trying to increase its size and increase its reach for more customers. The way that you normally go about scaling up a brand is either by increasing the amount of money money that you're spending on marketing or promoting your brand or increasing the output of just your time or your resources. The 24th term is influencer marketing. You're gonna hear this like crazy, but what it actually means is it's where brands collaborate with people who have big, huge followings on social media so that you can promote your products to their audience. And there are so many different ways that you can go about this that are all influencer marketing. You can either pay them, you can offer to send them free clothing and ask for a post, you can befriend them. They all count as influencer marketing. The 25th term is brand concept. If you watch this channel enough, you'll hear me say brand concept a million times. What it means is it's the core idea that defines what a brand is all about and how it wants to be perceived by its customers. It is the brand's personality and identity. The 26th term is brand statement, and every single clothing brand needs to work on their brand statement, which is a concise description, I usually say between five to 10 words long, that captures the essence of your brand identity and value proposition in a brief and memorable way. The 27th term is aesthetics. Every single clothing brand needs to worry about the aesthetics of their brand. It is super important. And it is basically how your clothing brand looks and feels and whether it is pleasing to the senses or attractive. The 28th term is emotional appeal. How much does your clothing brand create an emotional reaction from your customers and create an emotional association or emotional bonds? You want to evoke experiences like happiness, sadness, humor, and all these different feelings that we have from your brand. The 29th term is utility. Utility is a particular type of value that your clothing products can offer by being practical or useful. So some examples of this might be having products that increase warmth, make you more protected, or just offer more comfort. And I've saved the best one for last year. The 30th term you must know is credibility. Credibility can simply be transferred out in your brain as trust. 
You need people to trust your clothing brand in order to want to buy from you. And you can increase trust through social associations like social proof that we talked about earlier in this video, which is getting other people to wear your clothing brand through getting testimonials, through building a beautiful website so that it looks legit and not amateur and building credibility is super important. This video took me a ton of time and work to put together in order to be able to articulate these terms to you in a clear enough way that makes sense and clicks in really simply. I'd super appreciate it if you would drop a like on this video, leave a comment, let me know which one of these is your favorite. And if you're thinking about starting up your brand or you're already running one, you've got to check out the Apparel Success Mastermind. It's a monthly subscription where you get direct access to me, access to a community of other clothing brand owners, access to all of my courses and to exclusive live streams that we do every single month. You can learn more at apparelsuccessmastermind.com and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.